Hey guys, Big Red 3, Tens here again, and talk about a few things, not just the Vengeance pay-per-view. Um, I did see almost all the Vengeance pay-per-view, I missed, um, I missed parts of the main event, which is why I didn't write the main event, I missed a certain chunk of it, so I just called it very good. I'll rewatch the whole match whenever I can be able to watch the whole match, so I'll, I just wrote very good for that. Uh, the show I thought was okay, I mean, I didn't think it was anything really special. Um, Trademark described it as decent... Um, uh, Brandon on Twitter, it's the classic eight, described it as, bleh. I'd agree with both of those statements. There wasn't really anything special about the show, I thought. My, I thought Mark Henry Big Show was very close to being the match of the night, but I thought the opener was really, really good, so I'll give it to that. Nothing that really pissed me off on the show. Everything was pretty much exactly how I expected it or I would have done it. Maybe the only thing I would have done, nah, I mean... Not even. Maybe the Zack Ryder stuff. Maybe. Just because I thought, well, you gave Dolph Ziggler two matches anyways. I mean, it made no sense for him to win. But I don't think it really hurt Zack with all the interference. I mean, it probably hurt him. I don't think it buried him, like Trademark said. I mean, they had they blatantly made it obvious that they took out Swagger's partners. And Swagger and Vicky kept interfering. And Ryder eventually just got overhauled. I don't think it made him look that bad. So I don't really have any complaints there. So yeah, I don't really have anything to complain about. I don't really have anything to brag about. I thought the show was just okay. I don't know what else I'm supposed to say. It was just there. All right, let's get into the show. Air Boom versus Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler. Really fun opener. Given a lot of time. Very, very enjoyable. Three and a quarter. Really, really, really enjoyable stuff. God, this is one of the better w openers WWE has, ever do has done in a while. Probably the best non-gimmick opener since the Randy Orton and CM Punk. Actually, nah, not, that was a gimmick match as well. Probably the best non-gimmick opener in a long time. Long time. Um, oh, Dolphin Kofi from uh, Capital Punishment. I guess that was better. But this was still a really fun match, three and a quarter. Dolphin Zack, they had an okay match. Obviously, I mean, I think the fact that WWE gave Dolph two matches shows that they have great faith in his working ability. But uh, this was clear that, you know, they don't have that much time. So, I mean, he, was, he wrestled two matches. I could, They could understand him not wrestling that much. And they just had an okay match. I talked about the finish where he was kind of overhauled with interference. Yeah, the match was okay. Beth Phoenix, Eve Torres, yeah, the match was okay. Uh, Eve Torres did a few innovative spots from her jujitsu training. The match was... Whatever, I mean, nothing to talk about. It wasn't a horrible women's match by any standards. It just wasn't very good. Two and a quarter. Christian Sheamus, I thought this was good. Fallen, solid, back and forth action. Good stuff. Triple H and CM Punk versus The Miz and R-Truth. This was just okay. In fact, this was the worst match in the show, in my opinion. Even worse than the women's match. This was just dull. Nothing special at all. I, I wasn't bored. I, I, I was attentive. I was like this. But I was just like this. Well, I was like this. Some people were probably like this, or like this. I was just like this. Like nothing really bothered me. Nothing was bad about it. Um, the Kevin Nash stuff. I mean, I wish he just focused a lot more on CM Punk, because now it's looking like a Kevin Nash Triple H feud, which no one wants to see. Maybe that's the only thing I would have done. Um, Punk taking the pin. Who cares? His character died a long time ago. Two stars. Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes. Yeah, this was just okay in my opinion. I mean, I, I know some people who thought this was a good match. I didn't. I, this one I was kind of bored with a little. A little. I thought the last few minutes were really good. Cody did some cool stuff. It was a nice rub having him work dirt from the top with Randy Orton. But in the end, it's not like WWE's going to follow up on this. This is just a this is just a momentary rub in time that's not going to mean anything. So, two and three quarter. Uh, Mark Henry, the big show. This was a good match. I really liked this match. This match was a lot of fun, and that finish was awesome. For those who do not know, I'm a big fan of the Brock Lesnar big show ring collapsing finish from 2003. I love that finish. When I saw, I saw that finish live, and I was just going crazy. I was like, holy shit! I was like nine years old at the time, and I was just like jumping up and down, going insane when I first saw it. So I really, really, really liked that spot. And I was so happy that he's in this spot because I was telling myself, well, they're not gonna have. Big Show win, but I wouldn't exactly pin Big Show clean either. How are they going to finish this? This was a tremendous finish. Building to a rematch at Survivor Series, which the Mark Henry should win. Tremendous, tremendous stuff here. I really, really enjoyed this finish, and this match was fun. 
three stars. I really enjoyed it. And then, Matt, yeah, like the, there were some believable near falls. It didn't go too long. Some good selling. I, I really liked this match. Three stars. John Cena Del Rio. This match was really good. Um, I would say it was the match of the night, but I missed some parts of it, so I can't really call it. I'll, I'll just call it very good. I'm going to rewatch the match later. For right now, for, I saw enough of it to say I thought it was very good. Um, I, I need to see more, though. I, like I said, I need to see the full match start to finish. So, but yeah, good stuff. And I, you know, Del Rio winning with interference from Truth and Miz, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I heard one guy complain on Twitter, oh, they made Del Rio look weak with the interference. You're not going to build back Del Rio after that loss to Cena. I mean, I'm not a champion. It's just... You're not going to do it. I mean, he's just not. It's going to be very hard to come back from that. At least, at least they had Del Rio. <sighs> two things. If the heel's going to win by this way, two things. Um, one, at least it was legal. And two, this is the more important part. That wasn't, the missing true spot wasn't the spot that took out Cena. Cena got up and Del Rio attacked him again with the title. But that's what took him out. So it was kind of a little of Del Rio's intuition that finally beat Cena. Though he certainly had help with Truth and Miz. So I don't think it was that bad. It could have been a whole hell of a whole lot worse. So yeah, the show was just okay. Um, there's some good matches on here. There's some okay matches on here. But nothing you wouldn't find just by watching Raw. I'm pretty sure on Raw tomorrow you'll get just as good of a... Of a match involving Kingston and Board, you'll probably get just as good of a Raw main event as this pay per view's main event. It was just nothing special. I don't want to complain about the show. It was legitimately the definition of a throwaway pay per view. It had a very memorable spot, but that's it, really. Everything else was just kind of there. So, 6.5, I guess. I think that's fair. 6.5 out of 10. Sorry about my voice. I lost it over the weekend. <coughs> So, yeah, that explains that. But, yeah, 6.5 out of 10, nothing much to really talk about. All right, let's talk about some other stuff. TNA, because I've been bombarded and bombarded and bombarded and bombarded with messages saying, holy shit, I J James Storm won the title. Oh, oh my God, I'm being right. Really, like I told you guys, it doesn't matter. In fact, to me, it makes a hell of a lot worse. This is really, I never liked it. I, when I read that, I was like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, I just thought that was so bad because you're basically just devaluing, you're basically just burying Robert Roode. You're devaluing your world title. You're devaluing Kurt Angle. Yeah, nobody wins from this scenario except, okay, James Storms wins, but everybody else, Kurt Angle, TNA, Robert Roode, those three things is what defined their biggest show of the year this year. And they killed them all in fucking one minute. It was stupid. I really didn't like it. They're going to have a rematch on TV. They're going to have a match on TV with, with Rude and Storm where one of them is going to turn heel. If you want my opinion, I think, like I said, I, I'm done with this company. I want this company to go. But if you wonder what I would do, I would have Storm turn heel and have Rude chase him for the belt eventually. But that's what I would do. But it's already, it doesn't matter by this point. They already killed off Rude. I'm not going to start watching TNA just because they gave the belt to James Storm. Someone told me that. You got to start watching and they gave the belt to James Storm. To me, that's not a good thing. <laughs> to me, it's an even bigger slap to the face. To me, who ordered the fucking pay-per-view, it's an even bigger slap to the face. Like, holy fuck, you ordered the pay-per-view and the guy, his partner, the next show won in under a minute. It's like, why would you, like, like Instant Classic Game wrote on Twitter, why would you ever order another pay-per-view ever again from TNA? Ever. No good. I didn't like that. And I also had a lot of messages saying, well, Big Rat, this wasn't the plan. You see, Hulk Hogan convinced them out of it. So you have to take back your... It doesn't matter if Hulk Hogan talked them out of it. They listened to him. They listened to him. They changed their fucking minds. Fuck them, then. If they're that quick-witted to change their minds, then okay, fine. No big deal. I'm done, though. People think I'm all of a sudden going to change my mind just because I realized the plan was for Root to win. Well, guess what, TNA Defenders? He didn't win. He didn't win. So I don't care if he told me the plan was for him to win. He didn't win. Therefore, they fucked it up. Sorry. It is the way it is. No getting out of that. Now, people have been asking me, will you still watch the, the show? I will never watch the show. Will you... The TV show. I'll, I'll never watch Impact. Will you still read the spoilers? I'll read the spoilers just because, like I said... I will still listen to the Brian and Vinny Impact review always. So I'm going to be giving, I'm going to be receiving TNA information anyway. So I don't feel the harm in reading the spoilers when I'm going to be continuing following the shows. Um, one interesting question was Will you still review the pay per views? I'm um, pretty sure I'm not. Uh, I will review 
Hard Justice and No Surrender only because I, I already saw Hard Justice and I saw half of No Surrender. I was going to include them in the next All Sides of the Wrestling World. I've already seen them. I mean, I might as well just finish them, review them, and get on with it. Will I review like Turning Point and Final Resolution and Genesis and Against All Odds and that shit? Probably not. I really don't think I will. This company does not deserve my time nor my promotion. I'm just reviewing Hardcore Justice and No Surrender because I already put the fucking effort to see the shows. I'm just going to review them and get them out of the way. But this company does not deserve any more promotion on Big Rat's videos because I do not like this company anymore. So, yeah. It is what it is. Um, other news. Uh, the interview with Brian got very well received. I have never received that many great comments that quickly. And the view count is surprising. It already has almost 500 views. It's, our, it's on its way to being the second most watched video behind the one with Brandon. And that's just because Brandon plugged it on his own channel. He has like 3,000 subscribers. So I was able to garner a lot of views. But it's on its way to becoming the second most viewed um, interview show I've done. Which says a lot because no one knew who this guy was going into video. For those who have not seen the video which I would assume would be a good portion of people watching this video. Go watch that video, or that, that interview. That interview is the best interview I've ever done. It's a tremendous interview from the most knowledgeable man I know in professional wrestling. A multitude of topics. WWE from the 80s, from the 90s, from the present century. Um, ECW. He was a huge ECW fan, went to all the shows, well, most of the shows. He's been watching since the beginning. Um, TNA, WCW, Backyard Wrestling, Indie Wrestling. Piracy. He has a tremendous, tremendous rant on piracy. Um, meeting a lot of the wrestlers, just a, a plethora of great stories. It was a wonderful, wonderfully done interview. You should see it. Go click that link in the description box right now. Go watch the video. And Chikara is having their first eye pay per view. For most of you who've been following my channel for a while, Chikara is my favorite promotion. Has been that way for like the past two years. Um, I just feel no promotion better understands characters and booking of professional wrestling than Chikara does. All their characters are lovable, enjoyable, entertaining characters, and all of their booking makes sense. All of it, 100%. They have long-term booking. They never go crazy. And it's just a lot, a lot of fun. All their shows are so much fun. And that's why I love them the most. And they're having their first iPay-Per-View coming up. So I would like to give them a little plug here. Their first iPay-Per-View coming up is called High Noon. Um, a lot of the card hasn't been fully established yet. Only a few matches have been announced. I just wanted to post some of the information. Here's a link to uh, their to your channel, a link to the card, a link to where you can order the show. I just wanted to put that much stuff at least. There's not a big card. I mean, I'll, um, there, there more stuff will be coming along the way. I'll talk about what's currently, what's presently available. Um, we only have, I believe, five, four matches announced. Um... Eddie Kingston versus Mike Quackenbush. For those who do not know, Mike Quackenbush is the booker and creator of Chikara, and he's my second favorite wrestler in the world right now. Versus Eddie Kingston, who's my favorite promo wrestler in the world right now. Best promos in the business, in my opinion. They both have been competing in a 12 large summit tournament since since um a May. May. Where it's kind of like the New Japan deal. Kind of what the Bound for Glory series should have been, but a million times better. It's kind of like in New Japan where they have two blocks, the A block and the B block, have six wrestlers each, and everybody fights every wrestler in the block. And the two winners out of the block were Eddie Kingston and Mike Quackenbush. And they are going to have a match to become the first ever Chikara world champion because Chikara's never had a world champion before. They've only had tag team champions because the tag teams were the most important part of the company. But they're finally going to have their first world champion. That match should be really, really interesting. Those, those are the two biggest stars in the company right now. And that match is going to be very, very fun to watch. So definitely, definitely worth your time. The Spectral Envoy, Ultramantis Black, and Hello Wicked versus the BDK of Ares and Tim Downs. For those who have heard about the BDK, they're this organization formed in December of 2009. December of 2009 for Chikara. A bunch of wrestlers with their leader being Claudio Castagnoli and Ares. Those were the two leaders. They formed a group that tried to take down Chikara. Take down Chikara from its core. Um, they stole the Eye of Tear. The Eye of Tear is this magical, I don't know if magical is the right word. It's this jewel that when used properly, can you can force, you can use it to accomplish any of your desires. And one of the one of its purposes was to, you can gain control of someone else's mind. I know it sounds a little goofy, but trust me, it really gets, it really, really is cool and interesting when you start watching the product. You can control someone else, basically. The BDK used, 
Um, um, Ultraman Supply had this Eye of Tear. The BDK stole it from him. And then the BDK used it on, on Ultramantis Black's former partner, um, Delirious. Delirious is now with the BDK. And so Ultramantis Black has been against this BDK ever since for the past two years. And this is the blow-off. Um, Ultramantis Black, who's a very good wrestler, very entertaining, most one of the most over guys in Chikara, and Hello Wicked, you've probably seen him in Dragon Gate, he's a phenomenal talent, versus um, Ares and Tim Downs, who are both very, very, very good workers. Good, They're good workers, they're really enjoyable to watch. A no disqualification tag team war. This is going to be something special. This is going to be a great blow off. A tremendous feud done by these two. Um, someone else can probably give a better definition of uh, maybe Sean, of, maybe um, um, Emerald Frosian can probably add a little more details to the Eye of Tear, which I think will come into play in this match. But this match is very, very important. It's going to be really fun stuff. Gregory Iron versus Icarus. These two have been feuding all year. Several matches. Um, Icarus basically making fun of Gregory Iron's handicap. Gregory Iron, for those who do not know, has cerebral palsy. Yes, Gregory Iron is the guy in the CM Punk video where CM Punk came back to AAW and congratulated Gregory on a great performance. He and Icarus are going to have their final showdown, and it's going to be a pretty good match. These guys have had some fun matches in the past, and this is going to be their blow-off. Uh, Green Ant versus Torsus. These guys have been feuding ever since King of Trios. Basically, they did a Lex Luger Yokozuna deal where Green Ant was going to be the first person to slam Torsus, and he finally did it at King of Trios, and it was a huge spot and a great momentum from the crowd. Then they fought at Chikarasaurus Rex, where Green Ant again continued to Lex Luger stuff, where he had the Lex Express. He had the Flex Express, his own bus, <laughs> his own Green Ant bus, where he drove across America, and it was a very, very heavily built match. <laughs> They had their match at Chikara Source Rex. It was a big time match. It was a good match. Very good match too. A lot of good near falls. And eventually through interference, Torsos was able to win the match and beat Green Ant. And that was the end of that. Until Young Lions Cup came around. Green Ant was the favorite to win the tournament. And Torsos beat the crap out of him after his semifinal match. Completely destroyed him. To the point where in his finals, Green Ant was not able to compete. And he lost the Young Lions Cup tournament. And this is finally the big blow-off between Green Ant and Torsos. This feud has been going on ever since March. It's been a very, very well-done feud. Green Ant is a very, very good wrestler. One of my favorite wrestlers in the car roster. He, he, he bases a lot of his style out of Mike Quackenbush. And Torsos, who is a tremendous big man, arguably the best big man in wrestling right now. He is so good. He is so great in his big man role. And it's just a tr great matchup that I'm very looking forward to. Also, Amasis, for those who do not know, who, who people have heard of the Osirian Portal. Either you've seen them in the That's the Most Illegal Thing I've Ever Seen in Wrestling CCW video on YouTube, or you've seen them, or you've seen them in Dragon Gate USA, or CCW for that matter. Um, Amasa's the Osirian Portal had a severe car accident where his, it was at the time it was believed that his career might be over. Now he's coming to address the Chikara roster to tell of what his future in Chikara will be. So yes, these are only, there's only been four matches announced, plus that announcement. There's going to be more matches announced in the coming weeks. I just kind of wanted to start the build that Sanders Robin did. You'll probably hear myself, Sanders Robin, maybe True Slayer, the Trademark. You'll hear a lot of us start talking, Nightmare Baller 1, we, maybe even LV. I'm sorry, I'm just saying names. Um, you will hear us talk a lot about the show over the next two weeks. So definitely, I agree, definitely. You need to check this show out. It's going to be tremendous fun. For those of you who've never heard of Chikara, want to give it a shot, give it a try. You never know. You might really, really enjoy it. It is a lot, a lot of fun. Every single one of their shows, I have a lot of fun. I order every Chikara show without even thinking about it. Ring of Honor, sometimes it takes me a while to get to their shows. PWG, sometimes it takes me a while to order their shows. Chikara, I don't even think twice about it. I order the shows immediately because they're the their shows are so much fun. They're so much fun. They have very good wrestlers. Very, very, very good wrestlers. They have the best characters in wrestling. They have the best storylines in wrestling. And yeah, it's just a lot, a lot of fun. And please, 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 it's just $14.95. If you ordered this goddamn pay-per-view tonight, which wasn't a bad pay-per-view, but if you ordered this pay-per-view, you can definitely order that Chikara show. High noon, November 13th, 2011. I pay-per-view. Links are down below. Check out the event card. Check out the, um, go order on GoFight Live. Check out their YouTube channel. Trust me, you will love, love Chikara. Give Chikara a chance. This is my favorite promotion. If you like me and you like my videos, you will love this show. Okay, that's it for that. I believe I am done. I just, I just hurt my voice even more. All right, that's it. Um, go, go to that. Go watch the interview with the next big thing if you've never seen it. And yeah, that's it. Come on, guys. See ya. This show was okay. Come on, guys. See ya.